So where are we? April 1st, CIE orientation. We'd like to say hello. Say hello to my two million YouTube subscribers. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's only, I only have 51 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we were talking about the red flags is, you know, all of us have red flags, right? Whenever we go anywhere, I lived in Germany for four months, got red flags. I lived in England for three years, and, you know, there was lots of red flags that came up. Why? You know, when I lived in England, I thought, oh, we both speak English, yeah. But, you know, we're, as Churchill said, we are two nations divided by a common language. We tend to make judgments about other cultures, other people that are different than us. But the most uh, important thing is to realize that, you know, that we are making those judgments. We have red flags about different cultures because, you know, that's something that we're not used to. It's different than the way that, that, that we experience back home. Koreans made Korea so it's comfortable for Koreans, not for us vis visiting Americans or New Zealanders. Everybody goes through culture shock, at least in some varying degrees. That reverse culture shock, it's a real thing. I was in Korea seven years, and when I went uh, back home, I moved to Chicago. I worked for the Korean government, but it was weird. Every time I met another foreigner, like, this is a new foreigner, I'd be like this. I was like, oh, hi, how are you? My name is Bradley. They'd, they'd be, he just bowed to me. They, they thought it was the funniest thing, but for me, it became ingrained. Whenever I met somebody, I always bowed. We have two people, let's say the same exact job, the same exact everything, but one person has a great time in Korea, one person doesn't. Why is it? It's normally because of your mindset. It's time for lunch. Oh, thank you. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> And what they do is instead of what putting salt in, you put the salt in. That is, um, you don't like that? Radish oh, awesome. that they use so after you eat something like spicy. Like Say hello. Not to be Foreigners. <laughs> so crowded. How many people are on the subway right now? Dude, there's like hundreds, man. Hundreds. <laughs> the same number of subscribers. Two million. Well, 함께 힘내서 반값 등록금을 실현합시다. 감사합니다. The most important man in Korean history, I think, King Sejong. He is technically your boss. He is technically <laughs> my boss. <laughs> I'm from Sejong City, so yeah. Stranded. Slow pokes. The architecture, simplistic. <laughs> <laughs> There's like no artistic. Dude, no, 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 no artistic vision. <laughs> It was literally DIY on the weekend. So on both sides, they were one side was for civilians, for the um, like what do you call it? The, uh, the government officials were non-military. <laughs> this side was for the military officials. Okay. If you look up here, those are like the gargoyles. Those are the zodiac signs. You'll see those are the ones that got rid of the evil spirits.
couldn't tell which one's the king's entrance. Where? The one that's higher. The one that's higher, right. So that was the king's bridge, the king's door that goes into the king's uh, area. You see those chimneys? Those chimneys are the where they would burn the coal to warm the floors and the yeah. un undo yeah. flooring. They invented that in yep. Korea. You see how there's lots of uh, things that come down that make the walls removable? The reason being, so to protect the king from being assassinated, he would change his room where he slept every night. They cut down most of the trees just so that way assassins could not hide behind or in the trees. But this is the only garden really that's inside this palace. And this was built specifically for the queen. So you see it's kind of raised. If you come back here in Springfield, you see it's just now starting to bloom. Um, and over in the corner back there is actually a birthing room that's only for birthing. So that way she could look at the, the garden because she could never leave the palace after she became queen. You can see here these one, two, three, four. Those are actually the smokestacks for the Ongi. So they sent 50, 50 or 100, I can't remember. The 50 or 100 assassins scaled the walls in here, and just by chance the king was able to escape, but his wife was murdered. And his wife was really strong. So she was kind of like the one that wanted him to ally with the Russians and said to keep the, um, the, the Japanese out. But the Japanese killed her, and then in 1910, they annexed South Korea. Korea's White House. So, if you see the road barriers here, if you look down, they have secret soldiers across the street there. I guarantee you money, if you jump that fence and run up there, you won't be happy. <laughs> Check it out, Nutella stand. That looks, oh, it smells so good. Ah, he, he said there's free, blue, the, the blueberries on his, his uh, crepe there were free. Blueberry service. Yeah. Oh, man. You should get one. I won't even be able to eat dinner. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Beauty. Hey, how's it going there? Hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. My name's Jordan. I uh, live in Gangwon-do, and I'm an elementary school teacher. And I came here because I knew I, I needed something different, you know? I wanted to... Uh, to change the status quo, to keep growing, to keep learning, and uh, it's like non-stop. Is here. it working? It's working. <laughs> A-OK. -okay. And how are you liking it here so far? It's, uh, so far it's been super crazy. Mm. Uh, I think my favorite thing is seeing the smiles on the face of children. So how long have you been in Korea? Uh, less than one week. Less than one week, so he's fresh off the boat. Yeah, dude, I got culture shock. I'm like... Culture shock, yeah, I, he's I need he's to, in the like, middle hug of someone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'll make friends, and, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna keep it cool. How's it going? Hey. We got two spots on top. Oh, oh, yes. We're just doing a quick introduction again. Because uh, we have a couple uh, uh, current CIE teachers oh, over here yeah. to join us. Hi, I'm John. Uh, <laughs> I'm from New Hampshire. Uh, I like uh, vlogging. Well, I like filmmaking, and I'm doing a little vlog of Korea. So everyone say hi. What up? Hi. 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 Say hi to my 2 million YouTube two. subscribers. 2 million, yes. So I teach in Sejong City, really new city. So a lot of buildings are still under construction. Um, so yeah, I have only like two sixth graders in my class, for example, and we, we could get 30 by next week. Like we just don't know because the school is still growing. Um, but yeah, having a good time in Korea so far. So Jordan, where are we at right now? Uh, we're Dude, right down. We are literally in like the coolest city that I've ever been to. That is <laughs> such enthusiasm. We're, we're right next to Cheonglo, Cheonglo or uh, Kwangamun. Kwangamun is the central street in downtown Seoul. That's where we have the main palace, Kyungbukgung Palace. And uh, right behind us was the Cheonggaecheong Stream, which is the renovated area of Seoul. Oh, I don't think we've done a uh, formal interview yet. Uh, 
Who are you? How long have you been in Korea? What uh, are you doing here? Well, my name is Bradley B. I'm a, a university professor here. Uh, this is my second time in Korea. I was here for seven years, went back for eight years, now back for five years. Um, wow. My wife is Korean. I worked for the Korean government for eight years, but now I work for uh, Inha University School of Business. Uh, loving my time in Korea. I'm also the uh, in-country coordinator for CIEE, uh, and we are doing an orientation for You kind of culture us. <laughs> we're, we're riffing the southern hemisphere. My name is Emily. I'm from New Zealand. I'm teaching. Oh wait, is that Wangju. is that Emily with an A? No, no, oh. muffin my accent, bro. <laughs> just me. Teaching Guangzhou, teaching at a uh, English centre. So it's a public school, but has elements of Hagwon, and mm. that you're sole teacher with a smaller class size. What would you say is the greatest difference between New Zealand and Korea? Um. Probably the amount of people. And, <laughs> That's a good, and, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> and also. And the lack of sheep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just go home and plug my headphones in of sheep noises and like play it on repeat and suddenly I'm just transported home. <laughs>